Hagen. You are watching ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight, a weekly conversation with inspiring young people, up and coming leaders who contribute to the social, economic, and cultural well being of our state. Today, I'm really excited to have these three guests of ours uh, young people, junior, and senior students from Punahou High School. And of course, it's, they're actually my first set of guests who are also siblings. So thank you, Elizabeth, Andrew, and John, for coming to our show. Thank you, Miss Lee, for having us. Alice would be fine. <laughs> now, um, I learned a lot about you and, uh, and your brothers before the beginning of the show. And actually, your sister was here last year. You were telling me uh, because she won a science fair and she had an interview with Jay, right? So now, after the show, you can all go back and say, yes, I've been on Think Tech Hawaii, <laughs> right? <laughs> OK, now, um, I know that when I met you, it was back in April at the uh, TEDx Youth event in Punahou. So now, of course, the first que well, not well, OK, let me change a little bit. Uh, I know uh, TED Talk was started a couple of years ago and even here at uh, Think Tech Hawaii, right after this show, we have something called the World of TEDx in Honolulu. Um, but how, what does TED stand for? Tell us a little bit about that, Elizabeth. So TED stands for Technology, Entertainment, and Design. Mm -hmm. and it's basically a platform where students or your teachers or any adult can basically share the ideas of the world, hoping to inspire others. Mm. Now, um, how did you get involved then? I mean, it seems to cover a lot of different topics. I, I actually know somebody who, who was a Blue Angel um, fighter pilot with the Navy, and I know that he did a similar talk in Texas. And then, of course, here in, uh, in Honolulu, I know some, uh, a few people from Ocean that they talk about engineer. But in, the topic is endless or limitless because everything is related to technology, design, uh, and entertainment. But why are you three interested, and especially because you're all, you know, you're related, you're siblings. So, yeah, how, how did you get involved and, in, yeah. So when I was a freshman mm -hmm. um, at a school assembly, they were talking about some kind of TED event, and I wasn't really sure about that. Mm -hmm. So later that day, I went into class, and one of my friends, he's actually part of, he was part of the TED group, mm -hmm. and he told me about this TEDx youth group, and I was really, I thought it was a really neat idea that students had the opportunity to organize their own event. Mm -hmm. So at my school, we basically had a TEDx youth club, mm -hmm. and they ran a one event previous to my joining of it. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was just a really cool idea that students were able to share their ideas and organize events for other students and other adults to hear their ideas. Ah, OK. So now, Elizabeth, you are, uh, you're going into your senior year at Punahou. Mm -hmm. Now, Andrew and John, you are in your junior year. So um, Elizabeth mentioned why she's interested. So how did you guys, uh, how did you two get involved then? Well. I love watching TED videos to start with. Uh -huh. uh, they're always really interesting for me. And uh, well, my sister is the president of the club. And uh, I thought it would be awesome to help her out. Mm -hmm. And I also am very interested in, tend to start, in TED to start with. OK. Now, you mentioned that you've watched uh, a lot of other videos, TED videos. Which one? Are, uh, tell us some of your favorite ones. Some of my favorite mm -hmm. ones. Well, I remember I was really fascinated by one where uh, a man built a quadrocopter, and this quadrocopter could interact with him, and it could play a ball game, and it could balance a pole, and I thought that was fascinating. Oh, good. Now, what about for you, Andrew? Oh, uh, well, much like John, mm -hmm. I've always been interested in TED. I've always been fascinated by the uh, subjects that they've discussed mm -hmm. in the TED Talks. Mm -hmm. and. Um, she was my sister, so of course I, I would help her out with, uh, with the event. Um, I also thought it would be really fun to do. Yeah, there's, um, I also wanted to see what other kids uh -huh. uh, our age, since uh -huh. they were the speakers at this event, what okay. they would be uh, talking about and what their ideas on some other topics were. And it, I was correct, it was uh -huh. a really uh, enlightening event. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, uh, well, Elizabeth, you mentioned that uh, I guess the first event in Punahou started in 2012, but I want to hold off that uh, topic for a little bit. Now, because I remember when I first started emailing with you, um, obviously you're the director of the 2015 Punahou TEDx Youth, but you're also the license holder. So what, what does that mean? What is a license holder? 
So TED, mm -hmm. the TED Talks, it has a branch called TEDx Youth, mm -hmm. and these TEDx these TEDx events, they're mm -hmm. independently events where basically either a community or a school can run, mm -hmm. but in order to run a TEDx event, you must have a license to hold a license for students can come and actually watch you or people to come and watch you. Oh, so okay. that's my role as the license holder. I had to apply for that. Um, this happened about a year before my event started. Oh, okay. So that means um, whoever is the director, is this uh, an annual, uh, I guess you have to renew the license yes. every year then? Uh, so Punahou has the, I guess, the TEDx youth at Punahou. So are there other schools here in the state that has um, TEDx youth like, like Punahou? Mm -hmm. So uh, last year, mm -hmm. Punahou was actually the only school on Oahu to run a TED event, except for Kamehameha, but I think they did a very small event for their own school. Mm -hmm. But yes, so there's, so there's Iolani has a TEDx club, and they ran an event two years ago. Of course, Kamehameha and Punahou, and also Seabury Hall on Maui. Oh, okay. So now they, I presume they run individual events mm -hmm. at their school. Is there any opportunity that all these schools can get together and do um, a school-wide or statewide event? Um, so not at the moment, I don't think so, mm -hmm. but a lot of the students sometimes go to TEDx Honolulu events, mm -hmm. but we also like to help each other. For example, two years ago, mm -hmm. um, there was no Punahou TEDx event because we were helping Iolani and Seabear Hall. It was both their first years as a TEDx mm -hmm. um, club, so mm -hmm. we helped them jumpstart. So we did Google Hangouts because they were like on Maui, mm -hmm. and I talked to them about the role of the different teams, and I just mm -hmm. helped them get along. Now, um, I guess since you're talking about organizing these TEDx youth events, so um, you, you are really the one in charge of the, the recent 2015 event, mm -hmm. right? So um, tell us how did you pick the topic and how, how, did the, uh, how were the two of you involved, Andrew and John? So the topic mm -hmm. this year was sustainability of mm -hmm. us, sustaining the mind, body, and community. And basically, a year before the event, we brainstormed the topics. So this was during the summer. We brainstormed the topics, and we found that we all had different passions that we're really, we really want to share with others, but we felt like passion was a really broad topic. And we each picked something that really sustains us, so not really sustainability as in the environment and like being green and keeping the earth healthy, but about what sustains you as a person and what keeps you going and what can help others keep going and make their lives meaningful. Now, I know that event probably kept you really, really busy. Um, I'd like to hear from the two of you. How, how, uh, how was it for, for the two of you helping your sister out with the event? Well, we weren't the only ones who were helping out with her. There were, uh, I think, 23 other uh, student mm -hmm. core team members, mm -hmm. and they were also helping to organize the event. Mm -hmm. And so throughout the year, we were uh, meeting regularly to design and uh, organize this event. Mm -hmm. And so we broke into several core teams. For example, I was in the event team, and Andrew was also in the event team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we... Uh, um, Basically, we organized small things such as the pamphlets to give out. Uh, the food team, which was another team, mm -hmm. would organize uh, what food was catered. Um, the speaker team would work with the speakers and so forth. Ah, I see. So um, how much support did you get from the school? I think we generally had a really um, overwhelming, sometimes even, support from the school because I think the school is really good, Punahou is really good at promoting the students' ideas, so we have a voice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that was... Yeah, because I remember um, attending the event, and of course that's when I went, uh, that's when I met you. I mean, the, the turnout was really good. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about, you know, the type of speakers that you invited. Um, maybe Andrew, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, uh, the um, speakers we uh, the speakers were selected by uh, school uh, officials such as the principals, and the schools were from around the island. And the students that were selected came from very diverse backgrounds. Some of them not even from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah. So we uh, that was made that was done to ensure that we had uh, we had we had people that could represent different different ideas and different perspectives uh -huh, uh -huh. and 
different, um, just so we can have a very diverse event. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us uh, some of the, uh, the topics of, of the presentations? I mean, I remember a few of them, but maybe you can share that with the audience, any mm -hmm. one of you. So I think some of the most memorable ones, I know one girl, she spoke about what makes her happy mm -hmm. and how to enlighten other people. Mm -hmm. Another boy talked about his experiences in another country mm -hmm. and basically that all one step we need to do is really just to start caring, even whether it's for the homeless or the person next door, just really that one step will make a big difference in other people's now, lives. Now this picture that our producer is showing, can you tell us um, what the topic was about? Do you remember mm -hmm. that? So over here, this mm -hmm. is Jason. Lin mm -hmm. and he's from Roosevelt High School mm -hmm. and he spoke about his father's social activism mm -hmm. in China and how it inspired him to be a better person and a stronger person. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. No, it's 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 really, really diverse. I'm I I don't think I attended his, but I know that there was uh, talks about uh, making a, um, a better person, uh, talking about music. So how did you end up, you know, inviting people from all these different schools? Uh, are there any speakers from Punahou, by the way? I don't remember that. Um, so there was going to be a speaker, but unfortunately she on that day was not able to make it, mm -hmm. but she was leading up to it. Mm -hmm. um, but there were no speakers from Punahou. Mm, okay, so let's see. So there were talk about music, and then there were other activities as well. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us about that? Sure. Uh -huh. So uh, there were many clubs mm -hmm. which attended the event. The mm -hmm. Free Movement Club attended the event, and they're basically uh, a club that specializes in parkour and uh, other activities such as that. Mm -hmm. uh, the French Club was uh, also attended the event, mm -hmm. and Andrew and I happened to be the presidents of that, along with uh, Jihei, mm -hmm. who was another student core, core team member. Mm -hmm. um, I think the... Um, the, uh, the Kubi Club. Pounding Club. Club. The Poi Pounding the, Club. Oh, the Poi Pounding Club. So they club. made Kahlo, uh -huh. they brought in um, different samples of different, um, because of course the Kahlo plant, you have, there's so many different uses, so mm -hmm. they brought in many mm -hmm. different types of foods mm -hmm. from, that was made from the Kahlo, that was really mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. There was also 808 Urban, um, oh, they okay. they paint murals, like um, some of them really fascinating looking, and they painted two of them at the event, mm -hmm. and that was really interesting. Now, of course, um, it probably, I mean, it was a great event. It probably took you a long time to plan that. Now, I guess uh, we're coming on our first break. So what I'd like to ask you after the break is, you know, the things that you have learned about and perhaps some things that you do differently uh, for the spring event. Mm -hmm. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen, and with me today are Elizabeth Winnicky, Andrew, and John Winnicky from Punahou School about at Punahou. We'll be right back after the break. Okay. <laughs> Aloha, how you doing? I'm Gordo the Texar here on Think Tech Hawaii, where we co-host Hibachi Talk, where we talk about technology and bring in all kinds of cool guests. Also, my co-host with me today is Andrew, Andrew the Andrew the Security Guy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii, and thanks for watching Hibachi Talk. We also have Angus. And you there, lad? It's Angus. I bring in all kinds of wee things. Oh, look, you see my lips moving. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha, my name is Miley Scarpino and I'm the host of the Empower Hour. If you're interested in health, nutrition, fitness here on the island of Oahu, want to learn more about places to train at or different trainers available, then watch my show on Fridays at 3. We have a great time and I hope that you'll come join us. Much aloha. Now go get swole. education spotlight if you're just joining us my three guests today are three high school students from Punahou school and they are all involved in the TEDx youth at Punahou so um, John Andrew Elizabeth before the break we were talking about how you got involved in TEDx youth and the recent event uh, in April at Punahou so uh, 
I went there. Uh, the food was great. Uh, the presentation was really uh, good. But I noticed that there are actually not too many young people there. Now, can you, um, why is that? Because I, I know that, of course, um, uh, I guess the parents, they go and support the speakers. But I, I don't seem to see a lot of younger people there. <laughs> is, um, is that uh, my, just my observation, or do you notice that too? Um, so generally, at this time, of course, a lot mm -hmm. of students were preparing for AP exams oh, and other okay. exams, so it was hard to get in. Mm -hmm. But um, during our activity breaks, or mm -hmm. breaks during our event, we had several clubs there, mm -hmm. and actually m maybe about 12 clubs there, and so all those clubs had student members, so maybe after presenting those activities, they were kind of wanted to take a break outside, so a lot of them just hung outside mm -hmm. and spoke about ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah, so so these are nice pictures that you have from the show, uh, from, uh, from the event. Um, let me see. The, I guess the question too is, uh, this probably needs a lot of planning. So after this event, um, what sort of evaluation did you get? Um, yeah, I, I guess you and your team got together and did a debriefing. Mm -hmm. So tell us some of the lessons learned from this particular event. I think that for next event, mm -hmm. we would probably want to possibly incorporate more adult speakers in oh, okay. because it'll be a very good contrast to see and mm -hmm. maybe even more um, topics that has to do like with global. Mm -hmm. But it's very important, of course, to focus on Hawaii because that's where we live and local voices are very important to trigger imagination mm -hmm. of everybody's minds, mm -hmm. but maybe possibly incorporating some adult speakers. Mm -hmm. Any idea what kind of adult speakers you would like to have? Well, the kind of adult, adult speakers uh -huh. uh, I would like to see at least would be maybe voices from the, from the, uh, perhaps voices um, from the different parts of the uh, scientific community because I'm into science. Uh -huh. And uh, that would be interesting for me to see. Mm -hmm. I would also like to see probably um, adult speakers from the uh, education side of Hawaii as well, mm -hmm. because uh, we do go to a s school still. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to learn more about uh, the education system and uh, speakers who uh, have their who have a lot of knowledge in that area. A and I'm sure that there will be a lot of. Uh, um, I guess uh, adult speakers who would love to participate mm -hmm. in the event. What about for you, Andrew? Um, yeah, I know you two are twins. Probably <laughs> you s you you think very similarly. But um, are there p particular topics that you're more interested in? Oh yeah, um, I, I I've always been interested in the um, technology mm -hmm. aspect of mm -hmm. TED. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be really interesting to hear. But one of the most memorable talks that I've heard um, before was. Um, about graphene and its many uses, the the uh, yeah, it was just really fascinating the way its electrochemical properties and all different uh, ways that you can use graphene. I'm sorry, what is graphene then? Uh, graphene is mm -hmm. a, a substance that was created, the, a, a new substance that was uh, discovered a few years ago by uh, Swed uh, Swedish scientists. Mm -hmm. Well, it's. Uh, yeah, and it has a variety of very uh, unique properties mm -hmm. among materials. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, it has, for example, it has uh, sp special properties uh, uh, such as its ability to uh, conduct electricity mm -hmm. in uh, unique ways and its uh, remarkable strength mm -hmm. for strength to weight uh, ratio. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, um, then I guess that will be something that we should be looking forward to put, uh, yeah. to the next uh, put, um, TEDx use at Punahou. Now, uh, I guess the other question I have to is, uh, so this is mostly a student-run event. Um, do you have advices from the school who help you out, perhaps get speakers, or do other administration work to make this whole thing happen then? Mm -hmm. So at Paraho um, TEDx Club, we have a faculty advisor, mm -hmm. Mr. Casey Agena, and he's been really like a phenom phenomenal leader, just helping us coordinate the meetings. Mm -hmm. And but really, it's really been about the students. We were together a round circle table, just sharing ideas, and he was on the side. So he always let us put have our input. Mm -hmm. But if he had any knowledge that he wanted to bring in, then he was able to do so, and that was really helpful for oh, us. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you always probably need somebody passionate 
to drive the whole thing forward. Mm -hmm. But then, as you said, this is really a student mm -hmm. initiative. But uh, Andrew, I just thought about it. Too bad that the um, the solar impulse is not going to be here in spring. But I guess because they're here right now, that uh, the pilot would be a good speaker for for our um, our TEDx youth, right? You, you know about the. That's okay. Um, anyway, I just remember hearing the conversation yesterday. Um, some of the lessons learned from from this recent event. Any any thoughts about that? Yeah, I think um, it was awesome that we were able. Uh, I was. I have a deeper understanding and appreciation now mm -hmm. for uh, the running of large events such as this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, how cool is that? That mm -hmm. we are able to run an event. Um, a student, basically a student-led event, mm -hmm. um, and take the initiative to uh, ven to contact vendors, contact light specialists, uh, TV specialists, and we were able to work with all, all different sorts of people mm -hmm. uh, in order to put this event together. It was truly a blessing. Oh, good. And Elizabeth? I've learned that it's really essential for individuals from different communities mm -hmm. to come together mm -hmm. and work together to coordinate this. So a lot of the team members from Panaho, mm -hmm. the core team members, the organizing team, we haven't met any of the speakers before, but just to reach out with them in an email just saying, how are you doing? How's your speech coming along? Can I help with that? That was really meaningful for me. Now, um, I know that this is, of course, for young people, and we talk about, um, well, you guys are the next generation, and you certainly have concerns. Um, uh, the event in April, of course, showcased some of that, uh, the concern about sustainability uh, and the way things, say, the economy is going. Uh, and, and I know you mentioned that um, we need to hear from young people. Uh, tell us about that. I think that it's really important for young people to share their voice because, of course, we are the future and we're going to be the ones leading the change. Mm -hmm. And it's also these, especially these TED Talks are important because they are basically a springboard for a lot of students and maybe even adults. Springboards that if they hear something and they think of a project for it and it really moves them to do something, I think that's really important. What about you, Andrew? What do you think? Um, I think it's important to have young people mm -hmm. in, in uh, share their ideas because mm -hmm. uh, this was one of the reasons why we chose them to have uh, student speakers in the first place is uh -huh. because of the fresh perspective and uh, really kind of unbiased, mm -hmm. um, if I might, um, kind of view that they give to certain ideas. Yeah, it's just a it's just a different perspective that people don't Absolutely. hear a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and for, for you, John, um, if there are something that you are concerned with and that you can talk about that in the next event, what do you think that would be? Concerns that I would have for the next event? Um, no, concerns in general, not, not in particular towards the event, but something that you would like to share. Uh, with the audience. I know that you're really into science, but if there is something that you're concerned about the world, you know, your outlook on life, what would, what would that be? And would it be possible to have a topic on that for the next event in 2016? So a concern that I have, mm -hmm. well, first of all, I'm a loop leader in Honoho School, so uh, we do all sorts of community service and sustainability. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I was recently, um, we were uh, actually talking about sustainability, and uh, something that really struck me was that uh, how our, uh, sorry. That's OK. Um, yeah, something that really struck me was how our uh, e ecosystem in Hawaii is kind of decreasing. And uh, I think that that's something that I would like to see in our next TED event. Mm -hmm. It would be, perhaps it wouldn't be on sustainability again, mm -hmm. but it would be interesting to maybe touch on that idea. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm so glad that younger people are so concerned with, um, I guess, how we live our lives, mm -hmm. especially on an island state, because um, resources are limited. Um, now, all these, uh, I guess, team, your team here, I guess the image there. So these are 
people who are involved in this um, event in 2015, right? So I presume a lot of them will be graduating. So you are taking over the helm. Um, so over the years since Elizabeth, you mentioned that you started doing this as a freshman. So you, uh, you've been with it, with this particular group for four years. So what are some of the changes that you've noticed? So in 2012, mm -hmm. it was the first year, and I was. It was the first year in 2012, mm -hmm. and I joined in 2013 mm -hmm. when I was a freshman. And I, I've noticed that there's a lot more student involvement, especially in the organizing team, because when I was first starting off, people really weren't sure what this was, mm -hmm. because this actually first started out as a student's project to actually run a TEDx event. Oh, okay. So more students just joining in and helping out. Mm -hmm. That was a big change. Mm. So over the years, what have you done differently? Because at the end, you are a leader of of a club or this project. Um, so what are some of the things that you have learned as a leader mm -hmm. since now you're one, right? Mm -hmm. I think I've learned that it's really important to hear other people's perspectives because, because of course, I'm always, whenever we have meetings, I'm really excited during our meetings and I try to put on my ideas, but I have to learn to kind of step back and listen to what others have to say, maybe come to a compromise about what the, how the situation should be handled. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it always ends up working out so, now, I know it's hard uh, since you guys are siblings. So the next question is, I presume you're also on the team helping out and all that. So what are the challenges working you know, with each other as siblings and with, with the rest of the team? Or perhaps there are no challenges at all? Well, I think it's easier, first mm -hmm. of all, for the three of us to converse mm -hmm. without any barriers. Uh, we don't really have to. Uh, worry about offending anyone mm -hmm. with, between the three of us. But uh -huh. I think our group is so closely knit, uh -huh. the whole core team and really the whole TED club in general, uh -huh. that uh, there's not much of a problem in conversation in general. So. Oh, that's good. Now, um, it, is there any type of mentoring involved? Because as a leader, I presume that somebody must have trained you mm -hmm. earlier on. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Elizabeth? So when I joined as a freshman, many of the students were seniors, mm -hmm. soft, and then when I was a, so then they graduated sophomore year. Mm -hmm. A couple of them were still there, and they helped me basically during the year before kind of transition. Mm -hmm. So I was actually on my own this mm -hmm. year when I was applying the event. I was a junior. Many of the core team members this year were seniors. So I kind of had to take that really big jump. Mm -hmm. So I did have mentoring the year before and I just kind of saw how it was. And since I was in TED for a couple of years before, I knew how the event went and how the flow goes. Mm -hmm. So, but it was a really good experience for me to take that jump and see where my boundaries are. Now, this may be a, ch a difficult question, but um, so for this upcoming year, I, do you have anything that you want to do differently from, um, from what you have seen in the past few years? Mm -hmm. And John, Andrew, feel free to jump in. But I guess I can ask you first, I mean, since you are the director of the event. So are there things that you want to do differently this year? Um, I think a few students said that they might want to move to a smaller space because mm -hmm. this year we had the event in the chapel right. and the outside courtyard was really big. Mm -hmm. uh, we also let feedback that, that the breaks were a little bit long, so maybe cut that shirt mm -hmm. short. And of course, adult speakers. Um, but I think generally it, it went pretty well, the event, and I, I was just really surprised that it just flowed so smoothly. Oh, good. Now, before the break, Andrew, John, any, uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I have to agree with Elizabeth. I was really impressed by how smoothly it flowed. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it uh, we can attribute to the uh, closeness of our team and uh, I guess how well we prepared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We prepared for uh, a variety of things which didn't even pop up, so it was really helpful that uh, we met so much, I think. That's great. So it must be really a huge learning experience for, oh, yes. for all of you. Now we're coming on a second break. Um, we've talked quite a bit about TEDx Youth. So I guess in the last segment, I'm more interested in you know your work or your community involvement mm -hmm. and your academic work. How's that? 
Great. Now, um, you have been watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My guests today are um, siblings, Winnicky siblings from Punahou School, and they've been talking about TEDx Youth, youth at Punahou. We're coming, uh, we're coming on a short break, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Aloha. My name is PJ, and I'm the host of Hawaii Sports Update. I am very interested in local sports, and that's why I host the Hawaii Sports Update show. I bring in guests from Hawaii, I bring in guests from UH, I bring in guests from the community, I bring in big names, I bring in small names, I bring in all names that are community related and doing positive things, sports related in the community. Come join me every Tuesday at 1 p.m. here on Hawaii Sports Update. You can also join me on my golf tournament, the first annual PJ Sports Radio Show Golf Tournament. It's going to be held at Coral Creek. For any information, go to Think Tech. Hawaii, INC, and friend us. The PayPal and a summary of the event will be right there available for you. And don't forget to tweet us. Hi, I'm your host on Think Tech Asia, Bill Sharp. I look forward uh, to you joining us each Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, when we film right here in our studio in downtown Honolulu. The show, Think Tech Asia, focuses on contemporary events in Asia, and by Asia we mean anything from Hawaii, south to Australia and New Zealand, well, west to Pakistan, and as far north as the Russian Far East. Clearly, this is one of the most economically dynamic centers of the world, uh, and we bring you up to date on what's going on in a whole host of countries in this very vital region. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Welcome back to Business Education Spotlight at Think Tech Hawaii. If you are just joining us, my guests are Elizabeth, Andrew, and John Winnicky from Punahou School. And they are all involved in the TEDx Youth there. Um, and the last event was back in April this year. So um, the three of you, well, actually, you have uh, five of you in your family, I just learned. Uh, pretty amazing. Uh, you are all very involved in many different things uh, in addition to your academic work. So Andrew, maybe I can start with you. Um, how do you find time to do all these things? Oh. <laughs> maybe you can share some secret with me because um, <laughs> Yeah, this is amazing to, to realize that, wow, you do all these and you have 24 hours unless you have more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, there's a lot of coordination involved with mm -hmm. our parents and scheduling mm -hmm. all of the times to make sure that everyone gets everywhere on time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have to do a lot. There's, there are a lot of logistical barriers that we have to overcome. Mm -hmm. but. Um, other than that, there's just a lot of planning involved and just seeing what times will fit where in the day and just, I guess, using every hour okay. well. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, using every hour well, um, which sometimes we don't do. But it's nice to hear that from you. Now, um, you are all involved in TEDx Youth and um, I guess maybe you can share with the audience what you told me earlier on because my question was okay how how did you decide to do this is it because you have trailblazers like your sisters or what what motivates you what makes you get up in the morning and say okay I'm gonna do all that John well uh, like I said earlier uh, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, personal initiative. Um, although our parents do encourage us to do a lot of things, I personally would find it kind of strange if I woke up and I said I didn't have to do anything. So um, it would be, uh, yeah, it would just be strange for me. So a lot of it, I feel, has to do with personal initiative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, tell us. Uh, well, since you started that, maybe John, you can tell us. So, what else do you do besides academic work, besides um, TEDx Youth? Well, my brother and I, we run cross country, as well as uh, we also do research at the cancer center, and so that's a lot of fun for m my brother and I. Mm -hmm. We really enjoy our work there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just fascinating for us. 
Um, how often do you do you do your work there? Is it yeah? Tell us a little bit more about that. Andrew. Oh, the work at the cancer center is mm -hmm. it's generally a daily job. Mm -hmm. Um, but it depends on the experiments and uh, exactly what we're doing. For example, cell culture would only take a few hours while uh, an experiment such as ultraviolet irradiation of our cells, which is actually what we just did earlier today, mm -hmm. uh, could take uh, seven, seven or eight hours or exposure of a film or uh, SDS page or Western blot. Yeah, there's a, there's a variety of jobs that we have in the lab um, just to accomplish our tasks and of complete experiments, it it's really time consuming, but uh, for us it's time well spent. But most of it's it's a generally a daily job. So you actually go there every day. Yeah. So no wonder when you said you have to do a lot of logistical arrangement uh, among the four of you. Um, how did you get to work at the cancer center, and does it help with? Uh, do you get a credit for that? Well, I think that, uh, well, first of all, our sister uh, worked there before us, mm -hmm. and uh, she was actually featured on this show before, mm -hmm. I think, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And we uh, were really interested in cancer research uh, when we first heard that she was working there. And so uh, we started working there as well, mm -hmm. and it's just been a blast for us since then. So do you work together? Uh, you and Andrew, you work together? Mm -hmm. um, do you? Do you have any disagreement? Because uh, just to let the audience know, you are, you are twins, so mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Do you, do you fight when you're at work, or you collaborate really well together? Well, at work, we, uh, in general, we collaborate really well together, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. OK, what about for you, Elizabeth? You were telling me another project that you are working on. I'd like to hear a little bit more of that. So. Of course, TEDx took up a lot of my time, but I also had to find time for other stuff I was, I'm really passionate about. And so since I was going into freshman year, so 2012, I volunteered at the Kalihi YMCA, and I teach an ukulele and Hawaiian culture class for students from Farrington High School. So there's about 10 students in my class. I've been taking a break for the past few months, but I've been there going there pretty consistently throughout either pretty much twice a week and so those students as I worked with them to share my knowledge of the Hawaiian culture because I also take hula and I've also been playing ukulele since I was four um, it's really I really had a fun time there so the students there as we start talking more about our lives more about our personal lives and so this is about a year ago they started telling me even more because I've known them for about two years now mm -hmm. And so they told me that they didn't really have any higher aspirations for education after high school um, because either for financial reasons, lack of motivation. So I decided that I really wanted to really inspire them to do something great in life. So I helped Farrington High School organize the first college fair um, last fall. Wow, congratulations Thank on you. that. So how was the turnout then? It was really an, a great turnout. So I had a a club at Farrington helping me called Club Erudites. I also had the college counselors helping me. So we, of course, we printed flyers, got the word out. I spoke at assemblies to the students. And so we had about 200 students. A lot of them brought their parents mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And I also applied for a grant mm -hmm. from the Youth Service Hawaii Board, and I received that grant. And with that, we received uh, um, school supplies. I bought school supplies and also refreshments for the students. So they were maybe more attracted to come to the event. Are you the only one from Punahou doing this? Is this mm -hmm. your project? Yes. Wow. Thank you. That is amazing. But I'm just thinking, you know, Farrington High School, and then you have the Cancer Center. Your mom or your dad, uh, maybe your mom and your dad, must be amazing, working and then chauffeuring oh, you. you around. Is that, is that how that works? We've. Yes, my mom and dad, oh, we're really appreciative uh -huh. of all that oh they've gosh. done for me, huh? or all of us, mm -hmm. because it's really been, of course, up and down for everybody, right, but it's right. really an exciting journey. Now, TEDx Youth is something that three of you to do together, but of course there's uh, other things that you do separately. The Cancer Center, mm -hmm. I presume, just the two of you. So um, are there other things that all of you, the three of you, would do together? Yeah, so uh, we also dance hula together. Oh, you do? Mm. Wow. Paddle together during the summer. So right now we have Huiva Championships this Saturday. 
Um, so we're getting ready for that. Um, so how do you find time to study then? <laughs> Andrew, tell, tell, you still haven't shared the secret with me. I've got to get that oh. out of you before the end of the show. Oh, um, hmm. I mean, during the school year, I mean, well, I mean, in Ponaho we have uh, a few breaks uh -huh. during the day, usually when we can do homework. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it varies from person to person, but generally I like to finish my homework, or a, a lot of my homework in school. Oh, okay. So I have more time at home, mm -hmm. um, just for general studying mm -hmm. for things, since we have a, a, a lot of tests and um, assignments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so time management is a is a is a large factor. Well, especially the two of you are going into your junior year, and of course you're in your last year. Mm -hmm. So I presume the pressure is really high, as, and then you have to do all your applications, mm -hmm. right? Um, so talking about that, so let me go back to you, Elizabeth. Now this is going to be your last year. Yes. So what are your plans? And okay, sorry, before that, so who's going to take over that college fair for you at Farrington? Um, I'm hoping possibly to do it one more year mm. and so this time I want to help mentor the students mm -hmm. actually at Farrington mm -hmm. so of course I was working with the club erudite so there was a group of about 15 students I was working with them and I'm hoping that maybe they can start running their own college fair at Farrington mm -hmm. instead of help having somebody else come and help them but maybe just as a mentor directing them where to where to lead to go with this event. Oh, That'd okay. be very exciting. Okay. So um, last year of high school for you, so what are your plans then? Um, so I'm still going to be pretty busy over the school year. I'm also a Luke leader. Mm -hmm. I'm an Oahuan editor. Um, I also dance ballet, which I really love, mm -hmm. performing on stage, mm -hmm. on point. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be busy with, of course, schoolwork, the AP classes, um, college applications. So I'm waiting for the results in April. Uh, good luck with all that, and I'm sure you will do fine. Um, actually, one question that came to mind, uh, it, I really appreciate this opportunity to speak with you because I, I've met you know, high school students, and um, a lot of them have drives like you, and perhaps there are others who don't have as much. So you've done a lot um, in you know, the, the past few years so if you have something to share with I guess either your schoolmates or with high school students all over the state what are some of the things that you would advise them and I'm gonna go through each of you so I'll start with uh, maybe Elizabeth first and I'll let you think about that okay. I think finding something that you're really you want to go go for it and it's really important to have that drive within you mm -hmm. not someone telling you what to do but having your own incentive to go out there and maybe change something for the better mm -hmm. and also in terms of TED I think um, on Oahu we only have a few schools that have TED but I really encourage students to come more to these TED events um, join more in maybe even start your own TED event at your own school that would be a very I think that's a really memorable experience for me and I think it will be a great experience for you just to learn how to work with other people and just being involved in the community and showing the community that students do have a voice so each school they can apply for their own TED, uh, TED, uh, TED license, license. Yes. license oh okay that's good to know Andrew, what about you? Oh. Advice for some other young people? Um, well, like Elizabeth said, I think having finding something that you're really interested in is um, probably one of the most important things because uh, when you're working, at least it'll be something that you really enjoy and it's more like play than work. Um, other, than that, other than that, I would say um, make sure that you spend uh, most of your time like usefully mm -hmm. like you don't, don't don't try to don't waste any time because that's really just a big drain on a lot of things like resources mm -hmm. and you don't have a lot of time left um, <laughs> I mean you only got a few years until you have to go to college and after college you have to go to work and all that but you know good advice not only for young people but for people like me as well so John I will give you the last word <laughs> uh, I guess that <laughs> the best advice I could give is to uh, find something that inspires you mm -hmm. because uh, if you can find that thing that inspires you that inspires you to get up every day then it makes life a lot easier and it makes it makes it easier to see what you're working for and that uh, just seeing that uh, it's just 
easier for you to work with. Thank you. And I'm sure all three of you have something inspiring that gets you to get up every morning, right? Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate talking to the three of you and wish you all the best. And hopefully I'll get an invitation to the 2016 event, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alice. Thanks a lot. My guests are Elizabeth, Andrew, and John Winnicky from the Punahou High School, and they are also involved in the TEDx Youth at Punahou. You've been watching ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Do join us next week. Aloha.